You're listening to the N2K Space Network. And now, a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud, the cybercrime analytics leader. SpyCloud disrupts cybercrime by telling you what criminals know about your business and your customers, so you can take action to prevent ransomware, session hijacking, account takeover, and online fraud. SpyCloud constantly recaptures and analyzes new data from the criminal underground, including credentials, session cookies, and PII siphoned from malware-infected devices. With knowledge of the specific exposed data criminals have in hand from InfoStealer malware on managed and unmanaged devices, security teams can respond with a more efficient and effective process called post-infection remediation that fits seamlessly into existing incident response frameworks. Get SpyCloud's post-infection remediation guide outlining the seven steps for preventing a malware infection from becoming a full-blown ransomware incident. Visit spycloud.com slash cyberwire. That's spycloud.com slash cyberwire. And we thank SpyCloud for sponsoring our show. Can you believe that we're just days away from the end of 2023? And more importantly, we're smack bang in the middle of the holiday season. I'm talking decorations, lights, sparkles, Geminids meteor shower and cosmic Christmas baubles. And if you want to know what I'm talking about with that last point, you're going to have to stick with me until the end of the show. T-minus. 20 seconds to LOS. Keep Go for the floor. Today is December the 12th, 2023. I'm Alice Carruth and this is T-minus. True Anomaly closes a $100 million Series B equity raise. Armada comes out of stealth with $55 million in backing to develop their edge computing platforms. The US, South Korea and Japan agree to new initiatives in response to North Korea's space launches. And joining Maria in the second part of our show is Jeremy Grimmett, founder and CEO of Rogue Space Systems. Let's dive into today's intelligence briefing, shall we? And we're starting off with a series of investment announcements that show a strong end-of-year trend for space startups. Space hardware and software systems company True Anomaly have closed a $100 million Series B equity raise. The company was only founded in early 2022, grown at an incredible pace, doubling its staff headcount to over 100 people based at their Denver headquarters. The company's mission is to build solutions that address space domain awareness, security and readiness challenges. This includes a combination of software applications as well as on-orbit spacecraft performing rendezvous and proximity operations and non-Earth imaging. These products and services also offer solutions for space operator training, capability testing and rapid response missions. True Anomaly recently completed the build, assembly and integration of its first two autonomous orbital vehicles, which are slated to launch aboard SpaceX's Transporter 10 mission next year. Evan Rogers, True Anomaly CEO and co-founder, said in the press release that space is the newest and most vulnerable theatre of contemporary global competition. But the US and its allies are ill-equipped for a conflict that begins in or extends into space. True Anomaly is solving this by building the technologies for a more secure, stable, sustainable and transparent space environment. This Series B fundraise equips True Anomaly with the proceeds to maintain a deep focus on our mission, deliver incredible products and continue to invest in the nation's next strategic offset. Good luck to them. Coming out of stealth is no easy feat, so hands up for Armada, who have landed on the space scene with $55 million in backing to develop their edge computing platforms. According to the press release, Armada's mission is to bridge the global digital divide, empowering businesses and communities to leverage all of their data, regardless of where it's generated. Armada says that it's dedicated to unlocking the potential of generative AI, edge computing and predictive models on a global scale. 
We'll be keeping an eye on where this ship sails with Armada. And a final investment announcement. In-space propulsion company Helicity has raised $5 million in seed round funding from several new investors. The company is developing power technology based on fusion power. Helicity Space says that the successful close of this seed round enables them to advance their proprietary technology, the Helicity Drive, which consists of scalable fusion propulsion engines that could enable safer, faster, reusable and more fuel-efficient travel into deep space. The United States, South Korea and Japan agreed to new initiatives over the weekend to respond to North Korea's threats in cyberspace, including cryptocurrency abuses and, most importantly for us, space launches. The three countries' national security advisers met in Seoul on Saturday. Tensions have been rising in the North Korean peninsula after Pyongyang launched its first spy satellite last month. The meeting is a follow-on to a presidential summit held at Camp David in August, where the nation's leaders pledged to deepen security and economic cooperation. North Korean state media reported that Pyongyang was determined to launch more satellites soon, calling space development part of its right to defend itself as any other country has. It's also criticised South Korea for launching its own satellite, saying that there's a double standard. Staying in the region and Japan's iSpace and Orbit Fab have announced an agreement to collaborate on in-space propellant harvesting and delivery for future missions to the moon. The partnership will leverage each company's complementary capabilities to develop effective propellants and fuels from resources in space, such as water, ice and lunar regolith. The Memorandum of Understanding signed by iSpace and Orbit Fab sets the stage for a series of demonstrations including resource mapping and in situ resource utilization missions aimed at drastically reducing the reliance on supplies from Earth. The companies ultimately plan for Orbit Fab to refuel iSpace lunar landers as they travel through space to extend lunar and cislunar missions. Heading over to Europe now and with some news out of Luxembourg. Spire Global has been awarded a multi-million euro contract by UMETSAT, Europe's meteorological satellite agency, to provide radio oculation or RO data. The contract is for an initial period of two years, from 2024 to 2026, with three optional one-year extensions. The announcement follows a successful pilot program which demonstrated the benefits of Spire's RO data for weather forecasting accuracy and value. The company's RO data provides information about the vertical profiles of pressure, humidity and temperature across all points of the globe, including in the most remote regions and open oceans. Spire will provide the data in near real time and it will be distributed by the UMETSAT user community globally for use in weather forecasting modelling. The exact amount of the contract was not disclosed. Island-based Realtra Space Systems Engineering has been awarded a contract to provide global navigation satellite telemetry system hardware for launch vehicle provider Ariane Group. The contract has a value close to 1 million euros and will launch on the maiden flight of Ariane 6, designed and built by the Ariane Group on behalf of the European Space Agency. The Ariane 6 has experienced a series of delays and setbacks, but is currently expected to launch in the summer of 2024. And speaking of delays, we have four to share news on. The first is the launch of the X-37B space plane, which was pushed back until this evening at the earliest. The vehicle is hitching a ride on the SpaceX Falcon Heavy. Last night's delay also caused a knock-on postponement to a planned Falcon 9 launch. Both are aiming for evening launches from Florida. And speaking of SpaceX, their private Polaris Dawn space mission has been pushed back until April 2024. Jared Isaacman, who's funding the mission, took to the social media platform X to say that schedule slips should be expected. Yesterday, we reported on the United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur dress rehearsal, and at the time of recording, it all seemed nominal. Alas, the run-through did not go to plan, and the team were unable to finish loading the propellant into the rocket. The planned December 24th launch is likely to slip into next year. Redwire Space's L-band Link 16 helico antenna technology was successfully demonstrated during the first ever transmission of a Link 16 signal from space. The successful Link 16 demonstration comes as Redwire prepares to deliver more L-band antennas to another national security customer. Redwire Space Systems President Adam Biskner said, 
Redwire is proud to contribute to the transformative achievement that advances crucial capabilities for our nation's defence. This demonstration underscores that Redwire is delivering capabilities critical to space development that are proven and effective. Phew! And that concludes our briefing for today. We've included links to further reading on all the stories we've mentioned and added a few opinion pieces in the selected reading section of our show notes. Those extras include a War on the Rock story on why there should be a norm for safe distances between satellites, a Wall Street Journal piece on Tehran Orbital seeking a buyer, and the last is an announcement from Vast on a new human spaceflight advisor. You'll find them all at space.n2k.com and clicking on this episode title. Hey, T-Miners crew, if you're just joining us, be sure to follow T-Miner Space Daily in your favourite podcast app. And also do us a favour, share the intel with your friends and co-workers. Here's a little challenge for you. By Friday, please show three friends or co-workers this podcast. A growing audience is the most important thing for us, and we'd love your help to be part of the T-Miners crew. If you find T-Minus useful, please share so that other professionals like you can find the show. Thanks. It really does mean a lot to us. And now a word from our sponsor, Six Sense. Six Sense provides award-winning cloud-based automated endpoint and vulnerability management solutions to streamline IT and security operations. With its advanced platform, businesses gain complete visibility and control over their infrastructure, reducing IT and security risks and optimizing operational efficiency. With Six Sense, you'll get real-time alerts, risk-based vulnerability prioritization and remediations, and an intuitive automation and orchestration engine so you can focus on your core business goals, confident in the knowledge that your enterprise is secure, compliant, and running smoothly. Visit SixSense.com to learn why enterprises choose them. Our host Maria Valmazas is still out sick with the flu, but she recently spoke to Rogue Space CEO Jeremy Grimmett and started by asking him how the company began. We are the result of a research paper that I wrote uh, while I was in school. And um, I started building a team, got some feedback, understood where the market was headed. And after A lot of uh, research, a lot of engineering. Here we are. We're officially established in 2020. And um, we've been very, very fortunate with the success that we've had. And now we're operating our very first uh, spacecraft in space. Congratulations. That is not a small milestone to be hitting. Uh, And I know it's one of many to come. (laughs) Yes, it's it's funny because you put this, this satellite up. And it's in space and now you're operating it. And then once it's there and you're operating it, you quickly realize that this is like step one of like a thousand steps. So it's like, yes, we did it. Yeah. Oh, damn. (laughs) And now now the extra, extra hard stuff comes in as if this wasn't hard enough. Yeah. It's like, okay, now we got to start over. You know, now we get another one, but it's awesome. It's, it's fun. I, I wouldn't want to do anything else. Uh, I, I love my job. I love this company. I love my team. I just, I love what we do. And um, I think there's just nothing else in the world that I would rather do. I love hearing that. That's so cool. I would love if you could tell us a little bit about the tech that you guys are developing because you've won some really cool like Cyber grants and you're working on some really cool stuff. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, our intellectual property portfolio is is quite substantial. In the past year and a half, we won 18 phase one and phase two awards worth roughly about seven and a half million dollars worth of government funding. These are government contracts. It's not grant money. This is not free money. 
there's a lot of work that has to go into this and uh, we have to, you know, perform and, and actually deliver results. It's like the Ghostbusters uh, line, you know, the very beginning and they get kicked out of the university. It's like, I've worked in the private sector. They expect results, you know, <laughs> and so it's the same thing, you know, they, they expect results and uh, Rogue has been very, again, very blessed, very fortunate. We have uh, delivered phenomenal results. Now, uh, some of the tech that we're working on is everything from artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, sensor fusion to the scalable compute module, which is flying in space right now. It's all GPU based compute systems it's and it's setting up a foundation for what we're doing next uh our next program which is laura one that is going to go up we're targeting for q1 of uh, 25 so we're already down the road on that and we're getting there <laughs> i can tell you're deep in the weeds right now <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say I, i'm feeling that energy of like we are really in the middle of it right now so i, I appreciate we really you taking this <laughs> we're actually in the middle of three spacecraft development programs right now. So we have three systems on the drawing board. So Laura will be in uh, what they call critical design review. I want to say February, March will be critical design review. We've already done PDR, uh, preliminary design review. So now we're headed to CDR on uh, Laura. Yeah, we're a little busy. Well, I appreciate you telling me about Laura because, I mean, it's um, really the, the long-term future of what you're working on is is for ISAM, right? Or, or servicing missions? Is that sort of like the long-term vision? That's right. Uh, servicing and uh, logistics and support. I mean, we want to try to be like a AAA of space. So that's one way to look at us, right? Go and help you. We have the technology. We have the tools. Uh, again, thanks in large part to support and uh, backing from U.S. Space Force as well as our incredible investors. It's amazing when I talk to folks who are working on ISAM solutions, it does feel very sci-fi and I, I, it does blow my mind a lot. So I know you're very excited about the future. What are, you, what are you looking forward to the most, aside from hopefully seeing everything fly and working? Like When you look forward five years, what are you thinking about? I think one of the things I'm looking forward to the most is the use of our technology to do things like one of the things we want to do is is actually space archaeology. Well, what? Yeah, <laughs> that's what we want to do. Uh, one of the th- one of the things that we had thought about, you know, we have brainstorming sessions that we do, and one of the things that we talked about was, wouldn't it be cool? You know that that's kind of the line that kind of kicks it off in these meetings. Wouldn't it be cool if we could go up to space and find a historic spacecraft? Oh, like grab Sputnik. <laughs> well, Sputnik's deorbited already. He, he oh, has down. it? Oh, and, nah, that's how, oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking more of Telstar. Is Telstar still up there? I think, I don't know. I uh, know Vanguard 1 uh, is up there. I know Vanguard 2, I think, is still up there. Uh, there's still several. Uh, but there are men- multiple rocket bodies that are still up there from historic mission. There's there are all kinds of spacecraft that are still up there from from historic missions. And we got thinking about that. Wouldn't it be amazing if we would be able to find some of that histor- the, some of those historic objects and then work with down mass providers like Stoke Space to bring it back to Earth? and put that into a museum, you know, some real Indiana Jones stuff, you know, that's the kind of thing that we're really excited about. For Rogue, it's, it's very much about doing things like uh, helping our customers and extending life and creating a sustainable ecosystem, but it's also what we can do for the space community. What, how can we advance everyone? How can we get the next generation excited? How can we Uh, learn from what we've done in the past. And you can do that through something like a space archaeology. You can do that by studying materials in situ and getting that data back down so we can understand how to build and engineer things uh, for space better. There's all kinds of sciences that we can actually contribute to. And I, I really look forward to that. 
honestly, I have never heard the phrase space archaeology before, but I'm adding that to my lexicon because that is just a, a fascinating idea. And I'm just thinking it, the possibilities of that. I'm geeking out a little bit as you're talking about it because I'm going, wouldn't it be co- so cool to see, you know, after it has already launched, bring some of those components back down, what happened to it? Like, what were the stressors on there? Like, what were the conditions? That would be such a cool learning opportunity to speak nothing of what, like, the how the materials held up, all that kind of thing. Just fascinating. Have something like the ISS, uh, but it's only been around for what a couple of decades, a few decades, you know, and that's amazing. But that's in low Earth orbit. What we really need to understand is stuff that's been in orbit for decades in geostationary orbit. What about stuff around the moon? These are all different environments. They all have different radiation levels. They're all in different places. So we need to understand that stuff. And archaeology helps us do that. And I mean, I wouldn't plan on talking about space archaeology today, but here we are. (laughs) Here we are. (laughs) Honestly, it's like building cool stuff, solving cool problems is a lot of what gets the people up in the morning. But having these vision for something long term that's like a fascinating problem, but also has that cool factor of it gives back. It's a really neat idea too, honestly. I think that's the, I think that's one of the, um, Rogue has a very unique culture. I like to believe that it's unique. You know, every, every startup, every company is going to say, oh, we have an amazing culture and we have amazing values and everything else. I, I think that that does exist, but I think that Rogue itself uh, stands alone in a lot of these regards because everyone is so heavily vested in the vision that we have here at Rogue for what space can be. And I think that has been a driving force for why we've been so successful is that consistent vision that space is for everyone. And we want to put out technology that is going to help advance everyone. And I I think that that's just one of the biggest differentiators. We put our people here in a very entrepreneurial, very creative, artistic driven environment where there's a lot of free thinking, a lot of independence. There's a lot of companies that will take an engineer and they will pigeonhole them into You're going to work on this ink pen and this is your, this is your domain. You don't go outside of this ink pen here at rogue. It's a totally different situation. You could be working on the ink pen, the desk, the monitor, the computer, the, it doesn't matter. You'd be working on the building. We want our people working on what they're passionate about. And we're very blessed that everyone is passionate about everything that they do. So you get, you're not drilled into one thing. You're able to touch and and be part of everything. We'll be right back. Now, a word from our sponsor, the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute, currently seeking qualified applicants for its innovative Master of Science in Security Informatics degree program. Study alongside world-class interdisciplinary experts and gain unparalleled educational, research, and professional experience in information security and assurance. Interested U.S. citizens should consider the National Science Foundation's CyberCore Scholarship for Service program, which covers tuition and a $6,000 annual professional development allowance, as well as providing a $37,000 additional annual stipend. Apply for the scholarship and the fall semester by March 1st. Learn more at cs.jhu.edu slash mssi. Welcome back. I do love a headline that makes things sparkle, and you can't beat a cosmic Christmas bauble, can you? 
And it seems that the White House are just as taken with the dazzling image of Cassiopeia A, which they've included in the first ever official White House advent calendar. Yes, you know the tradition of opening a window each day and in my case revealing a weird-shaped chocolate behind tinfoil. If you've ever been to the UK, then you know what I'm talking about. The image taken by the James Webb Telescope shows the brilliant supernova wreckage still shining like a cosmic Christmas bauble around 340 years after a star violently exploded to create it. It was hidden behind the door of Sunday, December the 10th and revealed by the First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden. It might seem like an odd gimmick to have images revealed behind an advent calendar door, but it's certainly a conversation starter and an excuse to stare at a dazzling image of the universe. We hope that it inspires future generations to look up and get excited by things that sparkle beyond the Christmas tinsel. That's it for T-Minus for December the 12th, 2023. For additional resources from today's report, check out our show notes at space.n2k.com. We are privileged that N2K and podcasts like T-Minus are part of the daily routine of many of the most influential leaders and operators in the public and private sector, from the Fortune 500 to many of the world's preeminent intelligence and law enforcement agencies. This episode was mixed by Elliot Peltzman and Trey Hester, with original music and sound design by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producer is Jen Iben. Our VP is Brandon Calf. Our interview host is Maria Varmazes. And I'm Alice Carruth. Thanks for listening.